Okay. Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Jim Walmsley before the 2016 Western States 100. How are you, Jim? Doing great. You are about 100 yards from the start of your first 100 mile race. Yeah. Are you excited? I am. Yep. Uh, just kind of a lot of hard work. Finally coming to race day. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all done. So, How long would you say you've like been focused toward Western States in your training? Um, I mean, I think I knew back in December last year that uh, Western States was going to be a big goal this year. Mm -hmm. And then not sure how, like not sure how Bandera was going to go, whether, I mean, you still have to qualify mm -hmm. because I don't even know if I had a qualifying race to even enter the lottery the year before. So uh, qualifying was part of the process, but more or less all the races this year have gone towards building towards this or keeping me occupied before this race, I guess. So on those occupational races, yeah. uh, were they sort of lower level efforts or do you do you have a, a second gear or are you always all in if you're on the have a bib on. No, I'll, I like taking it easy if I can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if and you I, can. If, you can do that. Yeah. No. Kinda. Yeah. Some people can't. I mean, it depends, but for the most part, um, sometimes. Yeah. Um, do you think you'll be able to hold back at all? If you're able to hold back in some races, are you going to be able to hold back at all early on Saturday, or do you even want to? Um, the, the goal is always to, yes. Yeah. And as you've seen, that doesn't, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think the goal at Sonoma was to hang back and I lasted 10 miles and then that was it. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a lot different than a 50 mile race. So you just have to keep the bigger race in perspective. Have you had some, uh, you're in Flagstaff these days. Have yeah. you had some folks down there try to drill that into your head? Everybody always tries drilling it in my head. Um, but anyone that knows me knows that they could tell me a hundred times and I'll say yes every single time and then the gun goes off and it may or may not happen. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Usually though, if the stakes are high enough, uh, which it doesn't get bigger than Western States and ultra running, um, I can stick to a more disciplined race plan. So it's your first hundred? Yeah. But you're also a competitive guy, I mean like, how do you balance like is just finishing a goal you know or is it all just um, you know go for the win go for the well, podium I, i'm i'm totally starting with my goal is to win period mm -hmm. uh that's the goal with the side goal being i want to have a crack at the course record um and keeping that in mind all day um but at the same time like so i'm starting there i'm i'm not really focusing on the other goals there's a hundred other goals i can take away from this mm -hmm. and i think those are the goals i need to concentrate on if things do start falling apart that's where you break it down you step back and if i can finish a hundred miler that's awesome like at the end of the day that's super awesome i can build off so of you that could see that great. being like hey, you know if things did go sideways and yeah. like you end up having to walk down the downhills. Yeah, like, totally. you would still be, let's get to, to plus right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless something's gonna affect my career, yeah. uh, I'm getting to the finish line for sure. Nice. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not quite all or nothing. It's all or get to the finish. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's, well, yeah. yeah. The, the goal is to win. Yeah. And uh, I'm out there for a thousand other reasons besides that. So it's not going to be a drop race. Gotcha. Now, what gives you the confidence, you know, especially in your first hundred, to say I'm going to go for the course record because, you know, that that's, was set by and attempted by many people yeah. with a lot of experience in hundreds, experience in this course, and the course record was on an exceptionally cool day. Yeah. Like, um, well. So how do you consider like that? The heat. I don't really like. I I think. In my mind, if it was gonna be over 100 degrees, which means it's gonna be like 110 or so in the canyons, mm -hmm. like it's much hotter in the canyons, and I know that, but uh, I think in my mind, if it was over 100 degrees, I would see the course record starting to be a stretch, but in the upper 90s, I'm not too worried about. Um, I run really well in the heat. Okay. I grew up racing in the heat. Like that's, it brings me back to running cross country in high school, and it, it's fun. 
Gotcha. And high school cross country went great. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, as far as the confidence of just finishing and talking about that sort of stuff, I mean, yeah, it's just the competitive person in me. And if you shoot for that and you miss by a little bit, you're still gonna do great. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the mindset has to be there. Otherwise, you don't have a chance. Um, now does, are you the sort of person that always runs well alone up front or do you think it would help to have some people together at, you know, four well, still? I have a pacer at 62. So. Well, yeah. So that's you'd rather my, just have your pacer that's, rather That's my buddy. I don't need to run with anyone else. <laughs> yeah, James Bonet is picking me up at 62. Oh, James, and, uh, all right. Yeah, he'll take good care of me. So I think I've run out on the course around that section with him way back when. Yeah. Um, so you have a pacer. Is that going to be your first time with a pacer, yeah? Yep. Yep. Is that something that appeals to you or is it just trying it out or? Yeah, it appeals to me. It's one more person I get to try to drop. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, you're not. A little <laughs> bit. I, I keep telling James I'm going to try to drop him. Uh, it's fun. And, and after the river, I think we've talked about it, and there's a green light of I can try to do it then. But um, You probably shouldn't try to drop him on Cal Street, yeah. Well, there's also a split from Highway 49 on in, which might be the place to try to drop him. So I got to go after that for uh, Craig. So... We'll and see. I'm sure you know what probably the Cal Street record is. I'm not as worried about that. No. Um, I, I don't, I, I mean, I think Rob has that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a mid-race split. Um, I think if you're going to go after a middle of the race split or record sort of thing, might as well aim for the last one. I mean, that's the, that's the best part to run your best. Mm -hmm. Best part. And if you're aiming for that, that means you have to manage all the rest of the race well. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I mean, unless you wanted to like jog for yeah. 91 miles and then hit the... Uh, mm, not the plan. Not the plan. So. Um, how have you formulated your nutrition plan to go for, you know, 15 or 16 hours, let's say? Um, I'm basically just taking what's worked for me in 100Ks and 50 miles and hoping it holds out for, or, 50k wait 100k's and 50 miles and yeah. hoping that it works for 100 miles and what is that what does that look um, like for you i generally take gels probably two to three an hour and then i put calories in my bottle gotcha. um, so i mean i've talked to people about this and they think it's crazy but i usually say i aim between 500 and 600 calories an hour which is crazy but how i look at it is um that's what i aim for Usually I don't get that. And yeah. so I'll end up closer to maybe 400 or even 300 in a bad split. Mm -hmm. But um, aiming that high, sometimes you get extra calories in and I think it helps in the long run to just have more fuel than your goal. Yeah. So, so what does your training look like specifically since, uh, like, you know, I assume this, you know, Western yeah. state specific training since then. Yeah. So. Um, after Sonoma, my goal was to get recovered, kind of took a little bit of a down week and then got back into things. Uh, I think I had two days off because I got into another bike fall that wasn't bad though, but just timing with still feeling kind of dragging from Lake Sonoma and mm -hmm. then taking a hard fall um, just turned into, I think I took two days off, but still hit like 70 or 75 miles that week with two days off. Um, so, and then from there, I uh, just hopped right into it. So uh, what is like a, you know, core week and, yeah. you know, your high so, phase look like? So before Lake Sonoma, I put in a block, like my big training block for Lake Sonoma was a 120, 105, 120 essentially. Okay. I, my, one of them might have been like a 125 mile week sort okay. of thing, but the goal was 120. And what does that and look then, like on a, on a, you know, on a day by day basis? Like, are you doing a couple of long runs in there? You're doing a lot of doubles, uh, speed work. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get into it. So okay, that's sorry. what I did for yeah. Lake Sonoma. And then for uh, Western, not necessarily for Western States, but just trying to get myself fit. Uh, after that down week, I got into back-to-back -back weeks of 140 for the first time ever. Um, and the first week was the week that 
is really a big week that I'm drawing a lot of confidence, a lot of fitness, and just absolutely nailed the first 140 mile week. It was all in singles. I had tw over 22,000 feet of vert, and it finished in a two hour, 20 mile long run at 7,200 feet. Um, so like, felt great, went great, got in, yeah, crazy 30 mile day with James. Um, and that was a huge week. The next week I took down the vert a bit, but the intensity was definitely still there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've essentially, after those back-to-back -back weeks, um, kind of knew that every I came out fine and everything worked out awesome. And basically just kind of need to manage and stay fit off of that till race time. So, gotcha, so you didn't keep building. You're yeah. just like, I'm, you're fit. Yeah, so I hit 140, 140, and then I backed off to 120, 100, and then two weeks of taper. And what does a taper week look like? For you? Uh, so I ran 60-ish miles last week, and then this week uh, I took a day off for the first time in maybe a month and a half, mm -hmm. um, and just been running eight miles each day, and then today I might run eight or six. It's just kind of keeping the legs moving. Um, I do drills and strides at the end of a taper week because I'm doing less, so I want to do some things that help with feeling a little sharper. Gotcha. Now, I mean, you had those, you know, your biggest back-to-back -back training weeks ever. Yeah. How do you feel energy-wise energy right now? Awesome. Um, yeah. So I started taking like a post-run protein drink, and that's been like really the only thing I've changed in my training before, since Sonoma. Um, and it's, it's just helped a lot. It's something that I kind of cut out of my routine after college of just, I'm not really training hard enough to warrant it. And it's something I finally reintroduced back into my training. And, and what is that? And what specifically? What's working for you? Um, well, I'm taking first endurance ultra gin recovery drink and it's just, it's been awesome. Uh, like I just feel a lot stronger every day. And I think it just boils down to eat calories, eat sugar, <laughs> hydrate afterwards. Um, Which you might be able to do with real food, but you're not as inclined well, the, to... Yeah, the, the recovery drink just seems to work for me. It's got mm -hmm. a 320 calories, 60 grams of sugar, and 20 grams of protein. Like, And then you're drinking... I drink it with about 20 ounces of water, so... Uh, and what flavor is your favorite? I like Tropical Punch. Your Tropical Punch. Yeah, right? or Orange Cream, one of those. I actually think they kind of taste similar. You're not a cappuccino guy. No, not at all. <laughs> not really. I, I've tried it and I, yeah, I just don't. And even in the mornings, I like Red Bull more than I like coffee. Gotcha. Uh, so it's just then, not, a, you're not a coffee guy. I drink it sometimes, like, and I like it in the afternoon, but I'm too lazy to make it in the morning. <laughs> Red Bull has got the caffeine and it doesn't get to me to have to go to the bathroom like coffee does, so. Gotcha. Whatever. So you've been up in, uh, in the Sierra Nevada for a little while, right? Yeah. How's that gone? Uh, it's been fun. It's it's kind of an adventure. It's been unplanned for the most part. Um, almost got talked in the, by Chris Vargo to go to San Francisco for a weekend to just go knock out KOMs right now in, in the Mill Valley, which would have been hilarious. But uh, talked to James Bonet about it, and that's why I run stuff through him. Of, He's a little more he's, collected he's than more Chris Fargo. Well, I think <laughs> Chris was just baiting me and thought it would be funny. Um, yeah, because we, we got like a Flagstaff running group called Coconino Cowboys and I was just like, I don't know. So uh, it would have been just kind of us stepping on their turf. Because it's funny because they could come to Flagstaff and I guarantee they're not going to get stuff just coming up to elevation. You hear that, guys? Yeah. Lowlanders. <laughs> <laughs> so like, um, so why did you specifically come to Tahoe? Because you live in Flagstaff and it's just as high as where you're here, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you, were you on the course a bunch or...? My initial plan earlier in the year was not to get on the... I didn't really care to get on the course at all. Um, and But it, it all started with coming out for the Tahoe Ultra Running Camp, um, which was a lot of fun with John Fitzgerald and Sean Meisner. Um, and met a lot of new friends, but... Uh, Essentially, then it was whether I drive 12 hours back to Flagstaff or just hang out and then drive out 12 hours again and mm -hmm. it just became a lot more driving and 
just decided to come out here and just camp. And I'm really glad I came out and checked out the course because yep. uh, it's a lot more mountainous than I think the um, what you hear about Western states. Um, it doesn't get the credit of the ups and the downs. Like it, it's everybody's like runnable downhill course. And I'm like, oh, well, that sounds great. And then you get out on the course, and especially early mountain high country, it's some of the parts of the trail are a little burly mm -hmm. um, and then there's lots of ups still like you you still got to be able to climb yeah so I mean some of your most notable performances in ultra running have been on you know flatter or more rolling courses yeah. what gives you the confidence to come out here and race a course that has 18,000 feet of climb and 22,000 feet of descent I, I train on the mountains yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I run every day on these type of trails so that has no aspect of it. I mean, I think everybody points at my speed goat of like, oh, you can't run uh, in the mountains. And I'm like, no, like I, I wasn't fit. I wasn't climatized to elevation. And I wasn't like training. Like, yeah, it was just, I, I thought I could maybe get the preem at the start. And like, uh, yeah, Sage was in that one and Pat Smythe ran that. And I totally got my butt handed to me. And like, <laughs> it was just like, biggest lesson is don't show up to a race that you're not fit for. Like. Just, all right. And I think I gained a lot of respect just for the ultra world of people work their tails off and you gotta train like a professional to compete with the professional. It's not perhaps what like a um, let's run board might suggest. Yeah, yeah, which I always, yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're entertaining. But yes. um, no, very different runner now than 2014 and training is different. It, it's more back to the college days of the grind and training and things are going really well. Nice. Well. Best of luck out there. Thank you Jim. so much. Have fun. Yeah, appreciate it.